Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. Let's listen to this. Miracle Whip has a flavor so pleasing. Miracle Whip tastes so lively, so teasing. Miracle Whip only one of its kind. Miracle Whip best salad dressing you'll find. Miracle Whip tastes really good. Not too sharp, not too mild, but just exactly right. And Miracle Whip tastes different, too. Different from any other salad dressing. Try it yourself. See why it's America's favorite salad dressing. The one and only Miracle Whip. And now, the case of the careless client. It's early afternoon in New York, and a short, dumpy little man with lacquered hair walks down the second floor corridor of the Gordon Building until he comes to a door marked Daniel Russell, Private Investigations. Obviously, our unknown friend has been here before, for without any hesitation, he eases himself into Mr. Russell's office, and ease is the proper word. For Mr. Russell, with his back to the door and his ear glued tightly to the phone, doesn't even hear him. Now, look, Harris, you got to give me a break. You know I'm good for the money. Sorry, Russell, it's no dice. That's the gratitude I get, and after all the dough I've lost to you. All I ask is that you let me go on the cuff for another 20. I got a sure thing going on the 5th at Detroit. Now, where have I heard that before? Listen, Danny, why don't you do both of us a favor and stay away from the horses? Okay, Harris. You don't want to take my bets, I'll find a bookie who will. Yeah, name one. <clears throat> oh, uh... I beg your pardon. Uh, Harris, a client just walked in. I'll have to call you back later. I'm sorry if I interrupt, Mr. Russell. There's nothing important, Mr. Giuliano. Just one of my men checking in. Mm, I see. Sit down, won't you? Uh, you have something for me? Yes, indeed. I located your boy. Larry Stratton? Yep. Stratton's in New York, all right. Got here last week from Washington. First thing he did was to get himself a room under the name of Leonard Simons. Funny how they always keep the same initials. And where does my friend Mr. Stratton live? 1423 Carroll Place. It's a small rooming house. I uh, pumped the superintendent, but he couldn't tell me much. And incidentally, uh, that little talk cost me an extra 50. <laughs> I got no complaints, Mr. Russell. You do fine. Fifty dollars, you say? That's right. <laughs> hey, that's quite a wad you're carrying, Giuliano. Must be at least 15 or 20 grand there. So? So you want to be careful. I am. How much do I owe you altogether? 150 bucks. You'd like to double it? I'd like nothing better. It's easy. I need some information from this Mr. Stratton. You got it for me. How? Oh, now, come on, Russell. You, you must have some idea. All you've got to do is work on him a little bit. Work on him? Yeah. You look like a boy who knows how to use his fists. Get out. <laughs> you make a big mistake. Go on, Giuliano, beat it. Okay, no harm's done. Just suppose we forget this little talk, huh? Now think about it. You do that, Russell. You find it a lot healthier than talking. I'll be seeing you, fella. <laughs> No, you've, uh, you've got the wrong number. Now, look, Stratton, I haven't got time to horse around. I assure you, I'm risking a lot more than you are. Who is this? My name's Russell, Danny Russell. I'm a private detective. 
Until a half hour ago, I was working for a man named Cesar Giuliano. Giuliano? That's right. He's probably on his way over to see you. I don't believe you. Now, look, don't be a sap. I told him where you were. He even offered me an extra 150 to take care of you. Now, the smart thing for you to do is to beat it. What kind of a fool do you take me for? Don't you think I know a trap when I see one? You gotta believe me, Stratton. Why should I? How do I know you're not working with Giuliano? I can tell you, Larry. Giuliano. Hello, Stratton. Hang up. Hello, Stratton. That's fine, Larry. Shut the door, Coslo. Huh? Oh, sure. Now, listen, Giuliano. Good. You're going to tell me what I want to hear? You're wasting your time. Come here, Coslo. You, you want me, Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Coslo, this is Mr. Stratton. Hi. Mr. Coslo is a wrestler fellow, Larry. I meet him today in gymnasium. They say he can break your neck just like that. Yeah, just like that. But I think he's how you call a little punchy. Too many beatings in the head. You understand? Uh, what do you want I, I, me to do, Mr. Giuliano? Get him out of here. Oh, you think I bring him here to be lesson for you? <laughs> Strictly between us, Larry, I wouldn't be surprised if you were right. breathing. We'd better get a doctor. Where can I find one? Well, if you go down to the corner, you'll see... Oh, no, never mind. I'll get him myself. Oh, please. Sure. I'll be back as fast as I can. Oh. oh, Larry, darling, what happened? No, never mind, Eve. We're getting a doctor. Oh, I don't want one. What? I said I don't want one. But, Larry... Sh shut the door. Huh? All right. Now, now lock it. Now listen to me, Eve. Candid way. No, no, in, in that, that medicine chest over the basin, there's a, there's a roll of adhesive tape. Will you get it for me? Yes. Is this what you want? No, there's, there should be a roll of half-inch tape. Uh, there's none here. Are you sure? Oh, no, I've got it. All right, bring it here. Take off the cover. All right, now open up the roll. Well, there are numbers written on this. Oh, and I didn't tell him. You didn't tell him what? I was afraid they'd beat it out of me, but they didn't. Darling, what is this all about? Honey, don't ask me any questions. Huh? Someone tried to kill you. You don't have to worry. Giuliano wouldn't dare while he hasn't got this. Giuliano? Caesar Giuliano. Who is he, Larry? What does he want no, of please, you? Please, please, don't ask me. Don't ask me. I, I shouldn't have even told you that. I'm in trouble, Eve. I'm in real trouble. Why don't you go to the police? I can't. But why not? I can't tell you. Well, then... Hire a private detective. What good would that do? Oh, darling, obviously you need protection. I can take care of myself. Larry, you've got to. Now, he wouldn't have to be told anything. I I could make up some sort of story. Now, there's a man named Mike Waring. I've heard about him. That the one they call the Falcon? Yes. He's supposed to be very competent. But you're not being fair to him, Eve. If this Waring doesn't know what he's up against, he's liable to get himself killed. Oh, darling, believe me, it's the only way. I'm sure nothing will happen to Mr. Waring, and if he does, well, well, he's paid to take the risk. Just a second. Mr. Waring? That's right. I'm Eve Lowry. I spoke to you a little while ago on the telephone. Oh, so you did. Come on in. Thank you. Sit down. Oh, really, I haven't much time. Will it take any less if you stand? Well, I guess you're right. Now, what can I do for you? I'm in trouble, Mr. Waring. What do you call trouble? Someone's trying to kill me. Well, that's a good enough definition. He's made several attempts on my life already. Who's he? A man named Caesar Giuliano. Why? Why? Well, I assume that making attempts on your life is more than a hobby with Mr. Giuliano. Does he have a reason? Well, you see, my my father and Mr. Giuliano were partners. In what business? Importing. Mm -hmm. Go on. Well, 
Giuliano thought my father swindled him. Did he? Oh, of course not. Mm -hmm. Well, Giuliano swore to get even, but Dad died before he could. So Giuliano transferred his uh, affections to you. Hmm? Yes. Well, what would you like me to do about it? Well, what would you suggest? Oh, there are several possibilities. We could make out a complaint to the DA's office. Oh, no, I... I don't want to do that. I don't want any publicity. I see. Uh, do you know where this Giuliano is staying? Oh, I think it's at the Carlton Hotel. Why? I suppose I go up there and have a talk with him. Oh, no. Please don't do that. You don't seem to like any of my ideas. What's wrong with this one? Well, I don't see where it'll accomplish anything. Giuliano will probably deny knowing me. Look, Miss Lowry, if we're both going to worry about this, you're throwing your money away. I suppose you'll leave Mr. Giuliano to me and let me earn my fee. Hmm? This is Ed Hurley here again, friends. I have a little suggestion for you ladies who wonder what you're going to do for some interesting menu ideas. And my suggestion is this. Just get a two-pound loaf of Kraft Smooth Melting Pasteurized Processed Cheese Food, Velveeta. You can melt Velveeta for smooth, delicious cheese sauce that'll add extra goodness to vegetables or seafood or rice or just plain toast for a fine main dish. And it's such an easy sauce to make. All you do is melt a half pound of Velveeta in the top of your double boiler. Notice how smooth it melts without any lumps at all. Then slowly stir in a quarter of a cup of milk, season to your taste, and there you have it. A delicious cheese sauce with a wonderful, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. A flavor that everyone, the youngsters and grandma included, will enjoy often. And it's a wholesome dish, because Velveeta is so rich in important food values from milk. So whether you melt Velveeta for a swell cheese sauce or slice it thick for hearty sandwiches... You'll find Velveeta is a mighty handy helper, Mother. Get a two-pound loaf tomorrow, won't you? It's America's favorite cheese food. The one and only Velveeta. Made by Kraft. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. An hour has passed since Mike Waring went to work for Eve Lowry, who claimed her life was being threatened by a man named Caesar Giuliano. That's all Mike needed. Being a man of action, he goes right to the seat of the trouble. Who is it? Room service. I didn't order anything. Your name Giuliano? Yes. Well, that's what the order blank says. Just a second. Hello. You're no waiter? No. Nope. The oldest trick in the world. Apparently it still works. What's your name, mister? Mike Waring. You're not the private detective fellow I hear about. Why not? Why you play games? I want you to stop annoying my client. Your client? Mm-hmm. What did he tell you? He? Well, sure, you... Just who are you working for, Waring? Eve Lowry. Eve Lowry? I suppose you'll deny knowing her and... I suppose I do. Well, it won't wash, Juliano. What have you got against the girl? Well, it's a long story, Wary. I'd like to show you something. Get away from that desk, Juliano. But I just want to show you this. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Oh, come, Wary. A big boy like you, he's not scared of a little gun like this. No, but I've got a lot of respect for it. I don't blame you. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to hear more about your client. Client? This Eve Lowry you mentioned. Never heard of her. Oh, you're going to play it like that, eh? What else can I do? Let go, you fool. Let go. Come on, Giuliano, drop it. Hey. Oh. You stupid fool. How many times must I tell you, let go? Oh. Yeah? I'm uh, looking for a private dick named Danny Russell. What can I do for you? Hey, you're hurt. Sit down. Thanks. Call your doctor. No, don't bother. Just saw one. Say, you you wouldn't have a drink in this place, would you? Yeah, right in this desk. I'll get you a glass. No, no. Never mind. 
Hey, 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 go easy, mister. That stuff's been aged in the wood. <laughs> you mean that desk drawer? <coughs> Feel any better? Yeah. What happened to your hand? I got it caught in a cash register. Who are you kidding? Never mind. You come pretty highly recommended, Russell. And yeah, by whom? A man named Caesar Giuliano. Did you do some work for him? Get out. What's the matter? Get out of here. If you're a friend of Giuliano's... Now, I... take it easy. I never said I was. Well, I thought... He shot me up and then beat it. When I came to, I went through some of his papers and found your name. What did he hire you for? Let's see your buzzer, mister. I'm not a cop. My name is Mike Waring. Waring? The Falcon, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, this is a pleasure. You know, you're almost a legend in town. Yeah, me and the Giants. What can I do for you? Well, I'd like a little information. What kind of a job did you do for Giuliano? Routine skip tracing. Wanted me to locate a guy named Larry Stratton. Larry Stratton, huh? Why? Well, first he told me Stratton skipped out of Mexico, owing him some dough on a business deal. Then he offered me 150 bucks to beat some information out of him. This on the level? I don't joke about things as sacred as money. He had a roll on him that could choke a horse. Did uh, Giuliano mention a girl named Eve Lowry? No. How's she fit in? I wish I knew. Look, Russell, I've got a proposition. How about the two of us joining forces? I'll see you don't suffer by it. You just got yourself a boy, Waring. What do you want me to do? Know where I can locate Giuliano? Have you tried the Carlton Hotel? <laughs> where do you think I picked up this slug? Wait a minute, I got an idea. When Giuliano first approached me, I met him at a furnished room in Brooklyn. Well, what do you say we drive out to Brooklyn? Maybe worth the trip. I think this is the place, Mike. Doesn't speak well for Brooklyn. Got a rod on you? Uh -uh. Don't believe in him. I do. I guess nobody's home. Got a gimmick? You're not thinking of forcing the lock, are you? No, I leave that to you. And I'll look, Mike. Now, don't worry. If you get into trouble, I'll go halfies with you. Okay. How you coming? There, got it now. Like anybody's home. No. Well, as long as we're here, we might. Mike. Huh? Is that what I think it is? Yeah, I'm afraid so. <laughs> Someone really poured a lot of lead into this boy. You recognize him? Sure. It's Giuliano. What are you doing? Going through his pockets. Find anything? No. Nothing but this scrap of paper. Larry Stratton, 40... Hey, that's the character Giuliano hired me to find. Well, now it looks as though he found Giuliano. If you ask me... No, you're not imagining things. I heard it, too. Gesundheit. Coming from that closet. Yeah. Oh! All right, come on out. Stay away from me. Well, if it isn't Miss Lowry. You know her? Sure, this is my client, Eve Lowry. Where'd you get that gun, Angel? Never mind. The important thing is that I know how to use it. If you try to stop You're me, I... what? Oh. All right, Russell, get it. Got it. You hit me. What did you expect me to do? Applaud while you gave a demonstration on the use of firearms? What are you doing here? Come on, Eve, in case you hadn't noticed, there's a dead body in this room. All right, open up there. What? Come on, open up. Mike. Who is it? Police. Uh-oh. You can open up or do I have to break down this door? Just a minute. Listen, Russell. I want you to take Eve out of here. Why? You heard me through the fire escape. What about you? I'll stall them. Now, you drive back to Manhattan, see what you can learn about this Larry Stratton. No. Keep quiet. You know what you're getting into, Mike. I'll take my chances. Worst comes to worst, you can bring Eve down to local headquarters and we can straighten it all out. Okay. Come on, honey. No. Well, make up your mind, Angel. Do you go with him or do you stay here and face a murder act? Hey, what's going on in there? Open up. I'll go with him. Well, hurry it up. That's the luck, Mike. Same to you. Well, what's going on here, wise guy? Why don't you open that door? I was busy. Hey, who's that? Man named Caesar Giuliano. Huh? Who are you? Mike Waring. Did you gun him? What do you think? I think yes. Come on, Waring, I want you to try out our local jail. I think you'll love it. Hey, let me out. Let me out. You can't hold me here. Yeah, but we are, aren't we? Well, 
must be an answer to that. Oh, when you think of it, let me know. Now, just a minute. I didn't kill Giuliano. And who did? I tell you, I don't know. We're right back where we started. Not quite. Giuliano died around 6 o'clock, didn't he? How'd you know that? I heard the coroner talking. Well, I didn't get to that room till after 9. Suppose I told you a witness just turned up who says differently. Then you'd be lying. Okay. Hey, Bruce. What is it, Mac? Show the party in, will you? Eve. You recognize him, Miss Lowry? Yes. He's a private detective named Mike Waring. I hired him this afternoon to handle a matter for me with Cesar Giuliano. I never dreamt he'd go as far as he did. What are you talking about? Murder, Mr. Waring. You killed Giuliano. I what? Now, don't try to deny it. I saw you do it. And let's see you get around that. Remember, tomorrow at your grocer's, you can get a wonderful new salad oil for your homemade salad dressings, your cooking, your baking. It's Kraft Salad Oil. The first salad oil for home use ever offered by the makers of all those wonderful Kraft dressings. Kraft salad oil is a lighter-bodied oil, super fine to blend perfectly with other ingredients. Get a pint or quart bottle tomorrow at your grocer's. Ask for Kraft salad oil. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. A couple of hours have passed since Eve Lowry identified Mike Waring as the man who killed Cesar Giuliano. Now, once again, the cell door opened. Okay, Waring. What do you want now? Uh, That's no way to talk to a guy who's going to give you your freedom. What? Yeah. You can go whenever you like. Is this your idea of a rib? No, no, no. On the level. Well, I don't get it. Hello, Mike. Russell. Sorry, I'm late. What happened? Your client made a sucker out of me. When I got her into the car, she heisted my gun. I never figured on her doubling back here. Did you let her go, officer? Yeah, we had nothing on her. We figured you to be the killer. Well, what convinced you otherwise? <laughs> Your friend Russell here. Now, why don't you tell me that at 6 o'clock when Giuliano was shot, you and him were having a couple of beers at a joint. Russell and I... You Ar- remember, Mike. It was right before we went over to see Harriet and Nora. Oh, Harriet and Nora. Yeah, I... You didn't involve them. I couldn't help myself. No, I guess not. But the girls aren't going to like this. Uh, no hard feelings, Waring? Uh, no. None at all, officer. Let's go, Russell. So long, Mac. So long. Well, that was quick thinking, chum. Forget it. It was nothing. That's no way to talk about my neck. If you'll pardon the pun, I'm awfully attached to it. What do you intend to do now, Mike? Go back to Manhattan and find Eve Lowry. Any idea where? Yeah, There are two parties involved in this mess, Eve Lowry and Larry Stratton. Now, wouldn't it be strange if they were connected? What makes you think so? Just a hunch. And when I'm in a spot like this, I play him. Because, brother, I've got no other choice. Where's your grip, Larry? It's under the bed, Eve. Want me to pack all your suits? Well, I don't think you'll have room. I'll wear the chalk stripe. You can... (gasps) Larry. Take it easy, honey. Who is it? Who is it? Just us. Mr. Waring. Uh-huh. Well, that hunch was right, Mike. What hunch? I had an idea you two went together like ham and eggs. Listen, Waring, I don't know what you want. But if you think Eve killed Juliano, you're out of your mind. She didn't even know the man. And why did she come to me with that cock and bull story? She was trying to protect me. Against what? Look, I'm, I'm head cashier in a Washington bank. Giuliano's been after me to turn over to him the dates of large currency movements. What was it, blackmail? No. Now, don't give me that. Otherwise, you would have gone to the police. What did he have on you? Don't tell him, Larry. What can I lose now, Eve? Giuliano found out that ten years ago I served a term for manslaughter. I was drunk one night and I killed a man with my car. I served two years under another name. And if the bank ever learned about you being an ex-con, you'd be minus a career, huh? That's right. Is that why she killed Giuliano? I tell you, she didn't. Then who did? I did. Oh, you mustn't believe him, Mr. Waring. He's trying to protect me. I killed Giuliano. She's lying. It's no use, Larry. They're bound to find out sooner or later. But you couldn't have done it because I did. What do you think, Russell? The cinch one of them's lying. Ah, but which one? She She is. is. I don't believe you. Wait, 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 wait. Just a minute. As far as Giuliano was concerned, there's no great loss. He was a crook. 
But there's no reason why this has to go any further than this room. What do you mean? Well, Russell and I are fond of eating regularly. So for five grand, we walk out of here, forget we ever knew you. That okay with you, Denny? I don't like it. Ah, oh, come on, give him a break. And two and a half grand apiece isn't to be sneezed at. Well, there's only one trouble with that, Waring. Trouble? I haven't got 5000 Oh. How about you, Eve? I gave you my last $50. Well, how much can you dig up? Not more than a couple of hundred. Oh, well, that puts a different complexion on things. What do you think, Russell? I say we turn them over to the cops. Yeah, well, that's to be expected. Every killer likes a fall guy handy. What are you getting at? Just what it sounded like, Russell. Didn't anyone ever tell you you can't get away with murder? Really, Mr. Waring, I don't know how to thank you enough. Well, maybe you'll let me give the little bride away. You're not angry at me for involving you? No. Nah. After all, Eve, you're a woman in love, and they're not very rational creatures. Well, tell me, Mr. Waring, how did you figure out it was Danny Russell who killed Giuliano? Oh, there were several things, Larry. First of all, Russell told me that Giuliano had a roll on him big enough to choke a horse. And when I went through Giuliano's pockets, all I found was a scrap of paper with your name on it. So, what happened to the money? Well, obviously, it was stolen. That's right. So that opened up a new field. Suppose this was a plain, everyday murder for money. But Larry or I might have taken it. No, not very likely, Angel. That's why I offered to accept the bribe. I figured that if you two were willing to risk the chair for each other, a little thing like $5,000 wouldn't stop you. If you had it. And when you heard the best we could scare up was a couple of hundred. Uh -huh, then I knew I had to look elsewhere. Uh -huh. well, what made you think of Russell? Well, he got me out of jail by inventing an alibi for me. Something about a double date with a couple of girls named Harriet and Nora. Oh, I don't understand. Well, you see, by giving me an alibi, he also gave himself one at the same time, and he really needed it. Oh. Now, the truth of the matter is that at 6 o'clock when Giuliano was shot, I was still out cold in his apartment after he plugged me. No wonder Russell made it so easy for me to escape from him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know what gets me, Angel, is what you were doing in the closet where we found you. Oh. Well, I drove out to see Giuliano hoping that if I pleaded with him, he wouldn't bother Larry anymore. When I got there, he was dead. Then when I heard you outside, I, I got panicky. Mm -hmm. And down at headquarters when you accused me of the murder? Well, that was for the same reason. I wanted to protect Larry. <laughs> sure, I should have known. Well, good night, Larry. Take care of yourself, Angel. Now, wait, wait a minute, Mr. Waring. Why rush off? Well, this is all okay for you lovebirds, but I've got a lot of work to do. At this time of night? Mm-hmm. I've got a date with one of the most luscious redheads in New York. You call that work? And you've got to explain why you're 24 hours late, brother. It's nothing else but. <laughs> Good night, folks. There comes a time in the life of every homemaker when she has to fix a dinner fast. And that's when Kraft Dinner is such a help. You see, in just seven minutes cooking time, Kraft Dinner makes delicious macaroni and cheese. Wonderful, tender macaroni with fine cheese flavor all through. Just like I said, in only seven minutes cooking time. That's because every package of Kraft Dinner gives you a special quick cooking macaroni and just the right amount of Kraft grated for that grand cheese flavor. So tomorrow, get a couple of packages of Kraft Dinner. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. The Kraft Foods Company brings you The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Denise. Oh, thanks for calling, but I can't make it tonight, Angel. A quarter of a million dollars worth of jewelry is missing. And when that much ice is on the loose, someone is likely to get frozen stiff. This is Ed Hurley, friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case... Of the double nephew.
Before we join the Falcon in his latest adventure, I'd like to tell you folks about Kraft's golden cheese food, Velveeta. Velveeta is such good eating. Just taste that grand, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. And Velveeta is so good for you. It's rich in important food values from milk itself. For swell-tasting snacks, for good, hearty sandwiches, for thrifty, easy, hot dishes, it's smart to keep stocked with Velveeta. Get it tomorrow in the handy quarter-pound package or in the economical two-pound loaf. The cheese food of top quality. Velveeta is made only by Kraft. And now, the case of the double nephews. It's early Sunday morning in New York when Tom Lacey enters his apartment. He clicks on the light, looks around nervously, then walks quickly to the door to the bedroom. Goes in, turns on the bedside lamp between the twin beds, tosses a briefcase on his own bed, then turns to the other bed and shakes the shoulder of his pretty wife. Mm. Julie, mm. Julie, wake up. Mm. What is it? I've got to talk to you. In the morning. Do you love me, Julie? Mm? Do you love me? Well, what kind of a question? Do you? Ow! My shoulder. I've got to know. You've been drinking. Now, look, I'm serious. What time is it, anyway? Oh, no. Three o'clock. Go to bed, will now, you? Now, Julie, listen to me. Oh. Ju- Julie, I've... I've done something. It... It's hard to explain. Another woman? No, no, no. Nothing like that. Well, it, it's it's going to mean... That... Well, I, I'm going to have to go away. I want you to go with me. I want you to stick by me. Will you? What have you done? Will you stick by me, no matter what? What have you done? I... Uh... I robbed the vault when I closed up last night. Robbed? Yeah. More than a quarter of a million dollars worth of jewelry. I know it was a crazy thing to do, but I blew my top. For four years, I've almost been running the firm. You know that. Yesterday, I find out Carraway is retiring. You know I've been counting on them making me manager when he quit. And they didn't. A wire came from the Forrest family estate in Oregon. Old man Forrest is sending one of his nephews, Ev Forrest, a kid right out of school, never been in New York, doesn't know a thing about the business. He's going to take over. Wouldn't you know? Well, do you blame me, Junie? Do you blame me for getting sore? That's why I looted the safe. I was sore. What's the good? They'll know you did it. Well, I didn't stop to think. I just said to myself, they don't want me here, okay? I'll get out. Only I'm taking my share with me. I'm entitled to it. What now? Well, now? Well, I, I, I don't know. South America is something... You, you can go a long ways on what I took, Johnny. Where's the jewelry? Right here in my briefcase. Let's see it. Why? Just want to see what a quarter of a million looks like. Oh, okay. There you are. <gasps> Tom, they're beautiful. How are you going to sell them? Oh, well, there's always a market. We'll find someone in South America who won't get what they're worth, but we ought to clear somewhere around 100000 100000 You shouldn't have done it, Tom. Well, it's too late to think of that now. I can't put it back. There's a time lock on the vault. You're a thief. Well, what do you want me to do? (laughs) You know, I think I'm going to like South America. Are you sure there's nothing? No. No. No, 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 no. That'll be too late. I I see. All right, never mind. Goodbye. Julie, I've tried all the lines. No planes until Tuesday. We're sunk. We can't be sunk. But it's 10 o'clock already. If we're not out of the country, by the time Carraway opens the vault tomorrow, there'll be an alarm out for us, and we'll never get away. I know that. We could only get to Miami. And we could cross to Cuba, and once we're there, we can make arrangements. But the way things are... you stop babbling and let me think? There's nothing to think. No plane I know, I know, I know. Let's get ready. We'll go to the airport anyway. Well, what good there is There may the... be a last-minute cancellation. If not, we'll charter a private plane. Yeah, that's right. Only pull yourself together. You started this. Now help me see it through. Yeah, yeah, sure, Julia. Now what? Well, answer it and find out. Yeah, yeah. Yes? Hello. Are you Thomas Lacey? Uh, that's right. I'm pleased to know you. I'm Ev Forrest. Ev Forrest? Yeah. 
I see you're surprised. Well, well we uh, didn't, didn't expect you so soon. Yeah, I know. But my uncle had a special reason for having me get here today. Uh, may I come in? Uh, well, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, thanks. Uh, this, this is my wife. Uh, dear, I, I'd like you to meet Mr. Forrest. Ed Forrest, uh, you, know, you know, I was just telling you he's going to be the new manager. Oh, yes, how do you do, Mr. Forrest? How do you do? Now, uh, I'd like a word with Mr. Lacey. Well, go right ahead. You don't have to worry about Junie. Uh, this is very confidential. Well, whatever you say to me, you can say in front of her. Very well. It's about Mr. Carraway. Oh? How do you get along with him? Uh, so, so, Why? Well, my uncle's a little concerned about the last few reports he's received from Carraway. Concerned? How? Well, the figures don't look right. And now, Carraway's resignation. Uncle wants me to look into it. That's why I came right to you. I came up directly from the station. Carraway doesn't know I'm in town. Well, what can I do? Well, we'll go down to the firm. I want to look over the books. Today, before Carraway can find out. Oh. Well, well, well I, I'm uh, sorry, Mr. Forrest, but... Uh, well, Junie and I were just leaving. We have a date. Uh, I'm sorry, but you'll have to cancel it. This can't wait. Well, Jack, I don't know what to say. If you should only given us some notice. Oh, I couldn't. Now, I'll be frank, Lacey. We suspect Carraway, not you. But we don't know how close you are to him. We didn't want you to warn him. I see. That's why I'm going to have to ask both of you, you and your wife, to come along with me. I'm awfully sorry to have to do this, but, uh, well, you see how it is. Uh-huh. And, uh... Uh, I'm awfully sorry to have to do this. Jack! Oh! All right, Julie, come on, let's get out of no, here. wait a minute, Tom. Well, why don't you use your head instead of jumping into things? Well, he was going to delay I know, I know. But how far do you think we're going to get when Mr. Forrest wakes up? We'll call the police the first thing. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I, I didn't think. I've got the jitters. I've got to have a drink. Take a good stiff one. You'll need it. Why did he have to show up today? Well, maybe it's a good thing he did. Now, we don't have to rush to get away. We can take our time. Well, what do you mean when Forrest wakes Who up? Who says he's going to wake up? What? Take your drink. Oh, yeah. No. Now, what are you talking about? Mr. Forrest would look good in one of my scarves, don't you think? Huh? Of course, he's going to have to wear it a little too tight for comfort. Oh, no, no, Julie. You can't quit now, Tom. You're going to do what I tell you. No, I can't. You've got to. Oh. No time to argue. He's coming, too. Take another drink. I'll get the scarf. Now, we shouldn't have killed him. All we had to do was tie him you up. You still don't get it. Now we have a body to dispose of. It all takes time. Now we have time. How? We still have to get away. No, we don't. That's what you can't seem to get through your thick head. But, Juni, tomorrow the robbery will be discovered and maybe the body. Who's to say you committed the robbery? Well, it couldn't have been an outside job. There's a burglar alarm and a time-locked vault. Besides, besides, I locked up. I'm the only one who could have done it. Who knows you locked up? Carraway. That's right. Only suppose you say he locked up. It's your word against his. Now that we know old man Forrest already suspects Carraway of being a crook, Carraway hasn't a chance. Uh, say, that's right. Yeah, sure it is. Oh, well, still, a, there'll be an investigation. Our place may be searched. That's why we had to get rid of Ev Forrest. We have to have time to hide the stuff and plant a little of it where it'll do Carraway the least good. Oh. The robbery's sure to be pinned on him, and if Ev Forrest's body is ever found, he'll take credit for that, too. Ev Forrest found out about the robbery, so Carraway killed him. Yeah, it might work. It will. If you just sit tight and keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Hello? Hello, is that Michael Waring, the Falcon? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. How do you do, Mr. Waring? This is James Calloway. Something dreadful has happened. Frightful. I don't know how to... Uh, can you come over here right away? Over where? Forest Jewelers. I, uh, it's fantastic, but I'm suspected of robbery. Fantastic. Well, nothing like a little fantasy now and then. All right, Calloway, I'll be over. And uh, you will, of course, bring references. Will I? Well, I've heard you're a competent detective, but this is a highly important matter. Great deal at stake, and I must be sure I'm dealing with a completely trustworthy and capable person. 
You have my word for it. No need for references. Uh, nevertheless, I prefer to see the references. You doubt my word? Fantastic. <laughs> There it is, Mr. Waring. The whole story. Only two possible suspects. My assistant, Thomas Lacey, and myself. And since I know it's not myself, it must be Lacey. Mm -hmm. Though it's hard to believe. Been with us for years. Quiet chap, respectable. Whole thing's fantastic. Uh, yeah, but where do I fit? The police and insurance detectives are on the case. I want my name cleared. And a little peace. I've been grilled for hours. So's Lacey. Now they're waiting. Hoping one of us will crack. What makes you think I can speed up the cracking? There are ways. Oh, you don't say. I I think you know what I mean. I think so, too. Good. I think I can trust you to see that Lacey is properly uh, uh, uncomfortable. <laughs> of course, uh, you understand, Mr. Waring. I, I deplore such tactics, but, uh, well, under the circumstances, what can one do? One can go to blazes, and you're just the one to do it. Uh, what's that? You hired yourself the wrong boy, Carraway. Third degree is out of my line. Oh, now, now, now. I Did I say anything? Yes, you certainly did say. Oh, well, you misunderstood me. I don't think so. Well, you... Uh, you're not going to mention this. I'm making no promises. I'll... Look, let's be reasonable. Nothing hasty, eh? I'm prepared to pay. Well, I'm not prepared to accept. Well, suppose we forget what I just said. Use your own methods, whatever you prefer. Only continue to work for me. Uh, see if you can't get something on Lacey. No rough stuff? No, no, I... I had no idea you private detectives were so uh, concerned with propriety, as it were. Well, maybe I'm an exception. Now, suppose you send for Lacey. I'd like to talk to him. Here? Here. Very well. Yes, Mr. Carraway. Send Mr. Lacey in. Yes, sir. And uh, now, our little conversation, I, I trust it'll go no further. All right, Carraway. It's not that important. I'm glad you see it that way. Unless something happens to Lacey. Oh. Uh, what do you want, Carraway? Uh, come in, Lacey. Come in. And my name is Mr. Carraway. I thank you to remember I'm still in charge until Mr. Forrest arrives. Now, why don't you fire me if you think I'm a crook? When I can prove it, I shall. Now, I'd like you to meet Mr. Waring. Mr. Michael Waring, the Falcon. How do you do, sir? Hello, Lacey. You crazy? What's that? Well, one of you is, to pull a job like this. Well, I... I, I guess... Mr. Forrest is here, Mr. Carraway. Good. Send him in. Yes, sir. Mr. Forrest... The old man, has he come? Certainly not, Lacey. The nephew, Everett Forrest. You know we're expecting him. Well, well yes, yes, but I... What's the matter with you? Well, well nothing. Uh, nothing at all. Oh, uh, hello, Mr. Forrest. Come in. Thank you. Well, it's not the old man. Of course it isn't. What makes you think... Well, nothing, nothing. Uh, never mind, I... Uh, hello, Mr. Forrest. Uh, I'm delighted to meet you. It's lighter bodied. It's super fined. It's Kraft Salad Oil, the first salad oil ever offered for home use by the makers of all those wonderful Kraft prepared salad dressings. Yes, there is something new under the sun at your grocer's right now. A new salad oil, Kraft Salad Oil. The first salad oil ever offered for home use by the makers of all those wonderful Kraft prepared dressings. Wait till you try it in those wonderful salad dressings you make yourself. Those light-as-air chiffon cakes you're so proud of in all your special recipes that call for liquid shortening. For Kraft Salad Oil is more than just a new oil. It's a new kind of oil. Super fine for better blending by a special new Kraft process. Because it's lighter-bodied, it mixes perfectly with all ingredients, puts new magic into dressings, cooking, and baking. Don't wait. Put this new salad oil on your shopping list right now. Remember, it's lighter bodied. It's super fine. Get Kraft salad oil tomorrow at your grocer's. Look for the bottles with the beautiful labels. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Half a day has passed since Tom Lacey was startled by the appearance of a second Everett Forrest. The first, so far as Lacey knows, is still in the East River, which makes the second a serious problem. 
Now, in his apartment, Lacey paces the floor while his wife watches him. I didn't know what to do, Tony. I just didn't know what to do. What'd you say to him? Nothing, nothing. I, I was too startled. I, I couldn't say this man's a fake. I know he's not F. Forrest because I've killed the real F. Forrest. All right, as long as you didn't say anything. Well, now what do we do? Just sit tight. Well, we've got to expose him. We can't. You just Well, then make him expose himself. We, we could only get the old man here face to face with this fake. We don't have to expose him. The important thing is to wait until word comes from the old Mr. Forrest. Not about the nephew, he doesn't matter, but about Carraway. Now that there's been a robbery, Forrest is sure to wire the police's suspicions about Carraway. Well, the old man's away from his home. He's on a hunting trip. They haven't been able to contact him. So we wait. But it's getting me, Joni. What's this faker up to? What does he want? What does he hope to gain by impersonating young I Forrest? I don't know. Wait a minute. I know. He, he must know about the murder. Sure. Sure, otherwise, how could he be sure the real nephew won't show up? Yeah, that's it, he knows. And this is a subtle form of blackmail. His way of telling me he knows soon he'll be coming to me direct. Joni, what am I going to do You're now? You're going to do nothing. Just sit tight and wait. But he knows... Now, I... you listen to me. There's nothing anyone can prove. How do you know? Because if there were, the police would be holding you. Now, pull yourself together, you hear? Yes, yes, Joni. I hear Which one do you think did it, Waring? Lacey. Why? That's easy, Forrest. I'm working for Carraway. Yes, but you have no proof against Lacey. No, not yet. I'm still looking for the angle. Why, what angle? Well, only an idiot would pull a job where he was sure of being one of only two possible suspects. So he must have some angle. Some scheme to clinch it against the other suspect. Yes, but you don't have any idea what it is. No, you? Well, how, how can I? I? I just got here. I hardly know either of the men. Neither do I. What has your uncle told you about them? Oh, nothing much. Sent you here without instructions? Oh, instructions, yes, but not on personalities. Except he did say uh, I might expect a little jealousy from Lacey. Jealousy, eh? Hmm. Well, Lacey counted on getting Carraway's job when Carraway retired. He probably resents me for taking it. Yeah, he probably does. I wonder just how much. Well, does it matter? Might be an answer. You mean the angle? Well, not the sort of angle I was looking for, but uh, I was trying to follow the script. And it's just possible Lacey has been ad-libbing. Hello? Mr. Waring. Yes? This is Carraway. I'm in jail. Imagine, in jail. Fantastic. Uh, you, you took the word right out of my mouth. No, fancy that. How come they jugged you? Because they're idiots, that's why. They should know it's a plant. What's a plant? The diamond. What diamond? In my car. Oh, there were diamonds in your car. Yes, yes, Lacey must have put them there. Uh, most likely. So that's his angle. Well, I guess he is ad-libbing. Uh, what's that? That sort of plant is pretty feeble. He's working off the cuff. Well, I'll be seeing you, Caraway. Uh, are you coming down here? No, I'm going to visit Lacey. I may do some ad-libbing of my own. Mrs. Lacey? Yes. My name is Mike Waring. I'd like to see your husband, please. He isn't in. You mind if I come in and wait? I don't know when he'll be back. Well, I'm in no hurry. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Waring. My what? I, I can't ask you in. Can you keep me out? Well, that depends on how determined you are. What do you want? I told you, Lacey. I told you he's not here. You alone? Yes, but I have a gun. Do you want to see it? No, I'll take your word for it. But I'm not so sure I'll take your word for being alone. Unless you smoke cigars. But Tom went out just a few minutes ago. The smoke hasn't cleared yet. Oh, I see. Well, I won't press the point, Angel. If Lacey doesn't want to see me... I don't know if he wants to see you or not. Does he know you? We met today at Forrest's Jewelry. Oh, you're working on the robbery. Yeah. Well, when Tom comes in, I'll tell him you were here. But he's told all he knows. Mm -hmm. But I haven't. What do you mean? Just tell him I know how the stones got in Carraway's car. Well, what, what, what stones? The ones in Carraway's car. Were there, there stones? There were. In... Hadn't you heard? No. Well, you just ask your husband. I'm sure he knows all about it, and so do I. Are you accusing Tom? 
Just give Tom my message. See what he says. Good night, Mrs. Lacey. Good night. Julie, what was all that? Who was it? It was Michael Waring. The Falcon. What did he want? You. Well, why? What, what, what? He's on to you. Oh, no. He's on to you, I say. Oh, no. I stole him because I didn't want anybody to see you till you'd pulled yourself together. But with what he knows, I'm afraid the jig's up anyway. What does he know? Everything. About Forrest? I think so. I might have known. It's no use. I'm no good at this sort of thing. There's only one thing to do. I'm going to give myself up. Don't be absurd. Put down the phone. Put it down, I say. But, Julie... I said put down the phone. We're caught. It's the electric chair. Don't you realize that? But what can we do? I got out your little revolver. Here it is. Be careful. It's loaded. Well, what good's this going to do? We're going to get away. But, Julie, there isn't a There's chance. There's an excellent chance if you'll do what I tell you. Now, go on. Start packing while I go out for a few minutes. Where to? Never mind. Where to? But while I'm out, pour yourself a long glass of courage. You'll need it. Hello? Uh, Mr. Waring? Yes? This is Mrs. Lacey. Oh, not little Miss Sunshine. <laughs> Maybe I wasn't friendly. I'm usually not when strange men try to force their way into the apartment. <laughs> Uh, my husband's home now. He wants to see you. You gave my message? Yes. What did he say? Well, I told you he wants to see you. Is that all? Well, he claims he doesn't know anything about the diamonds in Mr. Carraway's car. Diamonds? Did I say they were diamonds? What? what? Oh, uh, well, Tom seemed to think that that's what you meant. He did, huh? Mm. May I speak to him? Well, why not come over? He wants to talk to you in person. All right, Mrs. Lacey. I'm on my way. <laughs> All right, Tom, that's enough. <sighs> Julie, what are we going to do? It's all set. I've got a taxi waiting downstairs. Oh, uh, and then we're going? Leave it to me. All right, all right, let's go. I in a minute. Well, what are we waiting for? You said taxi. You'll wait. I just want to... Who's that? I don't know. Who is it? Mike Waring. Waring? What's he want? Well, this spoils everything unless... Where's the gun? Right here. Good. There's only one thing to do. We've got to shoot our way out of here. Oh, no, Junie, I can't. You've got to. I can't, I can't. Do you want the electric chair? What? This is our only chance. I'll throw the door open and you shoot. No, I can't, If you Junie. shoot fast enough, Waring will never have time to get his gun out. Hey, remember me? I'm waiting. All right, I'm coming. Now, you do what I tell you. As soon as I open the door, don't give him a chance. Then we can make a run for it. <laughs> Miracle Whip. Has a flavor so pleasing. Miracle Whip. Tastes so lively, so teasing. Miracle Whip. Only one of its kind. Miracle Whip. Best salad dressing you'll find. Miracle Whip is the only one of its kind because it's a different type of salad dressing made from a secret craft recipe. Miracle Whip combines the best qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine mayonnaise. So it's truly distinctive and delicious with a flavor millions of folks call just exactly right. Try it, won't you? One taste will tell you why it's America's favorite salad dressing. The one and only Miracle Whip. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Only a few seconds have passed since June Lacey and her husband set themselves for Mike Waring's entrance with a gun. You ready, Tom? Yes, Johnny, I'll try. Remember, as soon as I open the door. What the devil? Close the door, Julie, close it. We're caught. He jumped back, now we'll send for the police. Wait a minute. There's still one thing. Oh, what's that? Give me the gun. What are you going to do with it? Let me have it. Here. Oh, but now what? Now you're going to commit suicide. Huh? You saw you were trapped, so you turned the gun on yourself. No, 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 Junie, wait. Don't try to kill your husband, Mrs. Lacey. <laughs> Anything happens to him, we'll know you did it. He hurt you. He couldn't have. Come on, open the door again. <laughs> and this time, come out slowly, both of you, with your hands up. And if we don't? You will when the police get here, or they'll drive you out. Now, hurry up, come on. <laughs> well, what are you going to do now, Junie? 
What are you going to do now? Stop it. You're such a good one at figuring things out. Well, go ahead, Junie. Start figuring. Fantastic, Waring. Absolutely fantastic. To think he'd go to such lengths. Fantastic. Uh, well, once they got rolling, there was no stopping. Especially when they were given what looked like a sure chance to frame you. Yes. Uh, the, has the body been recovered? Yeah. Forrest identified it as his chauffeur. His chauffeur? That's right. You see, the fellow knew Forrest was expected, so he beat him to New York and tried to trick Lacey into letting him into the building. Oh. That would get him past the burglar alarm. Then he could knock out Lacey and either blow the lock on the vault or wait until the next day when the time lock went off. Uh, but by then, I'd be back at the place. Mm -hmm. And he'd meet you with a gun. Anyway, once inside, his job was much simpler. That's why he tried it. And uh, got killed for it. Yes, because the story about old Forrest suspecting you of monkey shines fit in too well with the Lacey's plans. Yes, yes. But you see, then Lacey lost his nerve, so his wife tried to get rid of him so he couldn't implicate her. She wanted him to take the whole blame. Oh. She tried to get him in a gunfight with me, and she had his gun loaded with blanks. Oh, so he'd be killed trying to make a getaway. That's it. Hmm. She hoped to have me do her dirty work for him. And when I tumbled to it, I knew she'd try to frame a suicide, so I called her on that. But uh, what made you uh, uh, tumble, as you put it? Oh, well, the whole thing added up wrong. Her not letting me see Lacey when he was obviously in, then her calling me right back saying Lacey wanted to see me. But not letting me speak to him on the phone. I see. So you anticipated a trap. Uh-huh. And I didn't figure that, even with my bluffing, I could represent enough of a threat to make them go gunning for me, so it looked like the trap was set for Lacey. That's why I was ready to duck instead of shoot. Well, I'm glad you figured it out. Nice bit of deduction. Very nice. In fact, I might almost say... Fantastic? Uh, exactly. Uh, <laughs> how did you know? <laughs> Do you like rich, delicious, chocolate-flavored malteds? Well, you can make a malted just like that right in your own kitchen with Kraft chocolate-flavored malted milk. Just make a tasty paste of Kraft chocolate-flavored malted milk and a little milk in the bottom of a big glass. Fill the glass with chilled milk, stir it once more, and there. A Kraft malted is mighty nourishing, too, because it's filled with all the food values in milk. Get a jar of Kraft chocolate-flavored malted milk from your grocer and enjoy a Kraft malted often. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.